Welcome to the Prospectors Radio Show, the talk show for our community. Please welcome Rich Cooley, Indiana Gold Hunter Dennis Dayton, Kathleen Biffle, and your host, Tim Grimes. All right, everybody, welcome back to another edition of Prospectors Radio. I'm your host, Tim Grimes. Joining me tonight, I got the best co host in the world, as always, here with me. First off, we got Mr. Rich Cooley. What's going on, Rich? Pretty good. How's everyone tonight? <laughs> Doing all right, man. You have a good weekend? Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, working around the house. Uh, had to almost bail the, gar- or bail the grass. <laughs> Why? Was it that high? Well, I mowed last Saturday and cut it down to four inches, and I had eight inches I had to cut. So Holy schmoly. Yeah, you would am- almost think. Four inches in a week. That's mm-hmm. crazy. Was it all that rain, right? Yeah, yeah, we've been getting rain yeah, pretty man. bad every day for about eight days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've been getting a little bit each day for sure. My garden is mushy. I did plant some onions today, and I still got my potatoes are coming up pretty good. So hopefully tomorrow I'll get the rest planted. Ah, then, uh, then that's everything? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get the rest planted hopefully tomorrow, and we got to get it planted by the weekend. So Then your garden is in, right? Yep. Uh-huh. See, I was thinking of just putting some stuff in a couple buckets because I don't need much. A couple of tomato plants and a couple of cucumbers. Can I do that? Yeah. Do so you got to cut holes in the buckets or anything? Or yeah, you should. I mean, in the sides. Not or... rot, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want much. I just want a couple of tomatoes. That's all I want. Maybe it should be all right. Yeah, simple. You don't have to put any holes in it, I guess. Okay, I was thinking about it because. I don't have a garden area. Set them outside on the porch, or you just having it in the house? It, outside. Set them outside by the garage. That's what I was thinking. If it rains real bad, then you'll... Oh, so it would need some holes in it, right? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Just for it's drainage. <clears throat> All right, well, I'll try it. I'm definitely going to kick it around and see. But i got to do something quick, right? Yeah. Okay, will do. So what's happening on Cooley's Corner tonight? Uh, we're going to be having Ken Mountain Man on for, we're going to talk a little bit about pumps. About pumps? Yep, we're going to cover a little bit about pumps. I'm going to do a little steal about a couple different types of pumps, and then he's going to come on, and we're going to clarify everything and talk a little bit about pumps for a little bit. Ah, that sounds interesting. Have we? Have you ever talked about pumps? I don't know. Eh, somewhat briefly. Maybe, maybe here and Not there, right? The extent of what we're getting into now, basically. Ah, cool. So we're going a little deeper tonight. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sounds very interesting. Can't wait. Looking forward to hearing it. And I'll bring Ken in when you start your segment. We'll get him in here with you, and you guys can take he's, it away. He's doing a closer look on pumps. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or wait, you do deep closer. Dive. Wait, yours is closer look, so Rich will be deeper deep look. Dive. Yeah. yeah. Doing a closer look when? Wednesday. No. <laughs> no. No. You're doing like a closer look on pumps. Oh. And we were saying, no, wait, yours is going to be a, a deeper look or a deep dive Not on. Deeper look. Yeah, because Kathleen's got closer look, so you got a deeper look. Or oh, something. Okay. Well, <laughs> It's all good. Looking forward to it, Rich. And thank you for being here, buddy. As always, we appreciate it. Let's see. Oh, somebody was asking something uh, in the chat room about the 2,000 gallon per hour pump. So they maybe they'll chime in tonight when you're on doing your segment. So very cool. Awesome, Rich. Thanks, brother. Glad you're here, man. Oh, wait. Before I let you go, now you're finally going to be getting to go out prospecting, ain't you? Yeah. Yep, uh, hopefully I'll be at the outing this weekend. Yeah, very cool. Get the maiden voyage of your dredge, right? Yep, and try it out and see what happens. All right, cool, man. Look forward to it. So we'll get to see you. Yep, it'll be awesome. Nice, brother. Well, good. I can't wait. It sounds like fun. And uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll talk more about that later on and stuff. And, yeah, uh, yeah, we will. All right, buddy. Well, thank you for being here, Rich. We appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Also joining us tonight, we got our very own Miss Kathleen Biffle. Hi, Kathleen. Hello. How are you tonight? Good. Good. <laughs> we had a very productive weekend. What'd you do? 
<laughs> uh, pulled weeds that were higher than me <laughs> out of the flower beds. <laughs> <laughs> Those thistles. Oh, my goodness. Holy cow. And then um, just tinkered around the house and so you got- planted flowers in the flower pots, you know. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? What in the world is Shad doing? Sh- shredding, <laughs> the button, sorry. shredding documents. I don't know what he's doing over there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, we got one of those uh, battery-operated <laughs> weed whackers. Uh-huh. Is that what Shad was just playing with? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, you got a battery-operated weed eater. And? Yeah, so we're just, you know, cleaning up the house because we know that coming up, you know, there's not going to be very me- weekends that we'll be home. Right. True. Be prospecting. True. So you got some some of your chores out of the way so you don't have to Yeah, you know, next all weekend. the responsibilities we sure. got to do. <laughs> oh, yeah. No weekend chores. They, they don't go away. Do they? Man, but you should be ready then for next weekend, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait. Next weekend, um, we're going to be at the outing, hopefully. Cool. Cool, cool. We get to see uh, Rich do the, his maiden voyage. That's right. The, of the, what did he name? What did you name that dredge, Rich? Yeah. What is it? The Patriot. The Patriot. So we get to see the maiden voyage of the Patriot since, since it's been redone. You got a bottle of champagne to bust on it or anything rich. Uh, no, <laughs> darn <no. laughs> maybe we'll get a juice box and bust on it something we got to <laughs> something got to give it its maiden voyage and send it out there for luck that's cool so looking forward to that right kathleen You're yeah right. she is <laughs> yeah I'm right thanks <laughs> sorry Shad. you kid pulled her away <laughs> <laughs> well thank you Shad, for jumping in there real quick Oh yeah. I just hope Rich's dredge doesn't sink. It shouldn't. I think I it don't. <laughs> Speaking it... of those responsibilities. <laughs> uh, you've got the firearm pictures on yours. We're gonna have to put some bullet holes in it. Oh, that's... <laughs> that's all right. So what happened, Kathleen? You got pulled away there by one of the youngins. Yeah. They're always knocking on the door asking for stuff. <laughs> Tell them slide a note under the door, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on the air. Well, if we don't answer, they just stand. Exactly. They stare at you because it's a glass door. They just oh, stare they at do. <laughs> Trying to ignore you here. Like, Go away. <laughs> like, don't you know we're talking about gold prospecting, treasure hunting? Yeah. <laughs> this is our oh. time. Our time, kids. <laughs> when the doors close, like, yeah, you had all day to talk to us and you ignored us <laughs> yeah. all day long. Yep. Are we finally doing something that we need to focus on? They want to Oh, they have have a question. Yeah, <laughs> and every five minutes, <laughs> I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need a. I don't know what you need, Kathleen. You need a big, big light up on the air sign or something so you can put outside your door. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get to uh, get through my uh, clay that the clay balls that we we brought. No, back. <laughs> I was going to, but then I ran out of time. Oh. But it's all it's pretty much all you know dissolved now and right. ready to run through the the cleanup sluice. No, no. Did you go out Friday by any chance? Friday, last Friday, this Friday. No, we did it. Okay, all right. I just thought I seen video. It must have been an older video. Okay, it was yeah. an old video she that, shared. Oh, that was oh. an old one. Yeah. Okay, that was from May of last year, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a year oh. ago, oh. and we brought our dredges up the um, Buckabilly. Okay. <laughs> and I know there's good gold there, right? But, so we have to redeem ourselves. So that was one of them memory things that you just yeah oh, yeah okay because I was like oh she and Kathleen got out again cool yeah but I. Never think to. I thought of the new one too, and do I click on it? And then I remembered how the other one started, and I was like, "Oh, I've seen that before." Ah. <laughs> and I never look at the date on it to say a memory did, from. Did you it. read my post? <laughs> Evidently, they did it. <laughs> they, they clearly said. <laughs> I 
obviously right. I did not. I just watched the video. <laughs> I couldn't multitask. <laughs> I just watched it. I'm like, oh, good. Kathleen got out again. She'll be feeling pretty good this weekend then. She'll be a happy girl. But yeah, you're... we're just getting stuff ready for our long weekend coming up and mm -hmm. looking forward to it. It's going to be good to see you guys. I haven't seen you. I know. Well. None of you. You, Dennis, Chad, Bridge. I... It's been a while. When was the last time I seen you guys? Probably the end of the summer. Crony's outing, the I think. Oh, yeah, Ross Crony's outing. It was. Yeah, it was. Yep. Yeah, it's been a while. So yeah, I look forward to see you guys and doing some dredging with you and Carrie and Rich and Dennis and Shed, all of us. You know, just have have some fun and sitting around the fire and just being us. <laughs> it's gonna yep. be, it's gonna be nice. For Campfire sure. Tales, here uh -huh. we come. <laughs> uh -huh. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. So, man, Kathleen, that's awesome. So you got everything situated at home. You're ready for the weekend. Camper's ready. Dredges yes. are ready. And you're ready. Now, do you yeah, think we'll need... Do, you, do we need wetsuits still? Is it that cold? Or? Um, are you, I'm, I would bring I'm it. Bringing it. Bringing them? Okay, just in case. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm bringing mine just in case. Okay. Yeah, I always do because I don't want to be stuck freezing to death. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. It may be warm <laughs> enough where we don't need them, but mm -hmm. well, hopefully. it may be. Or if it's like today, we'll need them, right? It's a bit, yeah. chilly, a bit chilly today, overcast and crappy. So, okay, I'll bring it just in case. I'll be prepared. <clears throat> Waiters, wetsuit, check. Yep. Got it. Will do. I can't wait to see you guys. Got some goodies for you. And, and uh, like I said, can't wait. Looking forward to it. So, Kathleen, I want to thank you for being here as always. Yep. <clears throat> you know, it's always a pleasure having you. And now, we'll introduce your other half. Also joining us tonight, we got our very own Mr. Shad Bip. Well, how are you, Shad? I'm doing good. Doing good. Are you ready for the next weekend? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to get away from work for the entire week. For the entire week? <laughs> I think that'd be nice, yeah. Get an early start. <laughs> I only have to go to work one day this week. Really? I'm excited about that. <laughs> and you guys, one day? I got to work all yes. week. I'm thankful I get Monday off. It's like, holy cow. I use some time to, you know... Just take a break. Right. I don't have enough time. I mean, I got some time, but I'm trying to save it for, like, the crony outing and stuff like that. So I don't want to use it yet. I'm trying to ration it wisely. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it works out with everything we want to do, hopefully. We shall yeah. see. Mm -hmm. So you going to take off a week, yet, or no? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Cause it ain't good. We'll see. Oh, you're wanting to take off and get an early start, right? Well, to get some other stuff uh, taken care of and wrapped up around the house before we leave, and right, and just to make sure we're prepared. Cause you know, there's there's a lot just besides our gear and food you need to get. You know, wood and other stuff, obviously. So, mm -hmm. right. I I hate rushing at the last minute because you always forget something. I know. Or, yeah. You don't think of well, it. I try to do two or three days ahead. That way, I mark stuff off the list and make sure I don't forget anything. Exactly. Let's yeah, see that. I should follow Rich's advice and make me a little list because, yeah, I'll be loading up Friday after work. So that's when you see what you do, Tim. Is what you get everything all packed, what you think you need according to your list. Mm -hmm. Then you then you take it all out, everything, put uh -huh. it all on your poncho. On the driveway and inventory your gear again. Uh huh. <laughs> and then pack it all back up and take it. Can I just? And then have somebody else come and check it and unpack it all. Can I just put it, lay it all out before I load it up the first time? <laughs> oh, that's just how you do it in the Marines. Oh, you know? oh, okay. <laughs> I sit down and think of all the stuff I need to set the stuff up, and I write it all down. You know, just like I'm setting a dredge up and. Mm -hmm. set up and camping and eating and you know what i need and all that and i write it all down and then i go through the list and start packing it, start packing I, it I do up. that when i pack 
for my clothes and stuff. For a trip, right? I'll get ready in the morning. I'm like, oh, gotta pack that. I need this. <laughs> right, right. Okay. See, that helps. I'm sure I'll forget something. As long as I don't forget nothing essential, I'm all right. <clears throat> don't forget your dredge. I can't forget that. <laughs> or the motor. Because it's your actual valve, pan, snuffer bottle. Yeah. yeah. Foot valve, snuffer bottle, pan, all that good stuff. And we, all of us, are bringing our cons uh, to combine for the the giveaway. That's right. Uh, yeah, for, our, for the dress my dredge dress contest. My dredge contest. But now here's the thing. Now it closes when Shad twenty sixth. Yep, Sunday or Saturday night. Saturday night, and we was yep. gonna announce the winner Sunday, but we're not gonna be doing a show Sunday night. So, if anything else, either A, here's two options. We can announce the winner Monday in in the post or B we can announce it Wednesday on the show. Probably Wednesday show would be I better. I say do it live on air. Live Wednesday, what's a couple more days? Gives us time to go through the entries because yep. yeah, one day and then Saturday it'd be nice to have more than one day to pick a winner. So Okay, yeah. so we'll announce it Wednesday because we're not going to. So if you got some pictures, get them on there. You better get them in. This is it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go up, click on forum, mm-hmm. and it should be the second one down. Dress my dredge. Click yeah. on that. Mm-hmm. And, and if you don't know how to put your pictures in there, uh, there should be somebody in the chat room at all times to ask, and they'll help you out. Mm-hmm. Jaren's usually around. Bob's usually around. Ken. There's always somebody oh, yeah. around that yep. can help you put it in there. You're right, Rich. Yeah, because TikTok, it closes. And uh, we're going to be working on picking a winner after that. So good luck to everybody that entered. And we'll get all them cons and gold together and sh- ship it out to somebody. The odds are in your favor. Oh, they shit. definitely are. <laughs> I almost feel we should get to participate. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, man, I can't believe it. I would have figured more people would have got in on that. Yeah. It's not that, you know, it's not like you're hurting your warranty or <laughs> nothing like that. It's, you're just having to dress up your dredge a little, have some fun. I don't want to ruin your warranty on yeah. a huge dredge. Yeah, yeah, right. It's yeah. like, really? I don't know warranty <laughs> on there. Paint ain't going <laughs> to avoid your warranty anyway. Or some stickers ain't going to avoid your warranty. It's like, just have fun with it. And then next year you could change it when we do it again. Because we'll, <laughs> we'll do it again. <laughs> yeah, my paint job's already scratched up. <laughs> yeah, I got I, battle I, scars I'm, already. Yes, it does. Mine's scuffed up and it hasn't even left the house yet. And I've already... <laughs> I drag it across the yard and load it on the trailer and the floats will be scratched up, I guarantee you. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's how mine were. <laughs> but it's like, hey, have fun with it. We did. I had a lot of fun doing mine. I, I'm kind of excited to think what can i do to it next time maybe put some lights on it or something that'd be cool that'd be cool you know some dive lights from it say oh that'd be real shad you can do that to yours put dive lights that would be cool that would be cool (laughs) i was just thinking some of those strip led lights the colored ones that you get remote control and change the color of it (laughs) (laughs) that's what i was thinking yeah. Oh boy! <laughs> put a battery carrier yeah, on your grid, put a, put a your little, battery off of. And... Yeah, put a motorcycle battery on there or something to power them. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, I like it. The bug. Wow, <laughs> it'd be underwater. So. Oh, on shads, yeah, his be underwater. His will just attract fish. You know? Yeah. So that'd be pretty cool too. That's next year. <laughs> That's our next year plan. So we're ready. Next year, maybe we'll be eligible to be in it, you guys. If we get as many entries as we got this year, we're definitely eligible. Okay? Yeah. And we'll just have some random person pick the winner. We'll figure something out when the time comes. But cool. So, Shad, so what else, brothers, going on? Anything? Well, as you know, I'm waiting for FedEx to arrive with the stuff for air. You know, how this right. is reservoir oh. tank. Mm-hmm. But I did on, was it Thursday or Friday... I uh, met up with Patrick O'Masters, fellow crony, cool. GPS member, mm-hmm. and uh, bought a, a set of uh, regulators off of him. So, ah. great deal. Yeah. So you, Heck of a lot cheaper. 
So you got your regulators. I got two of them. And now, do you have any idea if your stuff's going to be in this week? Well, according to the tracking, it's already in Columbus, Ohio. So I don't know if I'll get it tomorrow, but it said Tuesday for sure. Well, so you'll have it for the weekend. <laughs> That's the plan. Sweet. Shad will have his oh, I'm excited. Oh, I you got enough weight belt there, big boy? Eh, I'll just <laughs> duct tape some rocks, you know, with some of the gorilla tape. Uh, <laughs> hey, I got some weights, not enough, so i got to figure something out temporarily. Oh, yeah, so. Kathleen, just stand there and put her foot on your back, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah she would love doing that, I'm sure. Yeah. We all <laughs> will. I'll have air, I'll breathe. Oh, cool. Just that... sit on me while I... Yeah. What are you saying, that I'm heavy? <laughs> oh... <laughs> Oh no! Uh, I, I knew I would throw that one. Answer in between the lines, or answer what? wisely, Shed. <laughs> We're not uh, saying nothing like that. No comment. He's gonna get in trouble. <laughs> oh, I'm glad it'll be here. Yeah, uh, you will have your air by this weekend. That's cool, brother. You'll ha- cool. That's awesome. Happy for you, man. That is great. And anything else? That's really all exciting that happened to me this week. Oh, okay. Pretty pretty dull, well, since, unfortunately, since, minus with all this rain off and on I constantly. Know. It's a bummer, I know it. But at least you're here and I know yeah. you, and I know you're ready to do some precious metal prices and some birthdays, so oh, take it away. It. Take it away whenever you're ready. All right, I'm ready now. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> your your current market prices. Well, as you know, gold has you know, took a big hit last week, yeah. um, but it is up $2 to 1291 Oh, okay. So if you look at the daily prices, it's on a slight trajectory to increase. So hopefully it keeps that momentum going. Okay. And now silver's up two cents to $16.41. <laughs> Platinum, though, Uh-oh. that's just on a downhill spiral oh. uh dropped five dollars to 885 it is dropping hmm. yeah and even our good friend at palladium that's down 12 dollars to 963 dang these prices are all over the price ain't they oh yeah but palladium seems to always constantly it be does. a roller coaster in between you know, nine hundred, nine fifteen, up to right. like a thousand dollar mark. I mean, mm-hmm. it just goes all over. I don't understand that one. Yep, me neither. Well, gold's so. getting closer to thirteen hundred again, so I think it'll make it by next Sunday. Back to thirteen. Yeah, least. I'm curious because you know, obviously, gold, the U.S. dollar, all of it plays on everything going on globally and all this stuff developing too, and a lot mm-hmm. of fears and whatnot. And I, I just read today that. Uh, the U.S. and China have a tentative deal mm-hmm. to end, uh, you know, our trade deficit and other stuff. So I, I'm curious how come tomorrow the markets are going to respond to that news. Well, how will I, they... I'm not sure what to make of it. But... Well, how will it respond to the royal wedding? Will the gold go up because of that? <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. What do you think, Chad? I, I don't care. <laughs> Wait, I'm wait, sorry. wait! Well, you, you didn't watch hey, it. Hey, he's not first in line. He's just—it's like it's like okay, buddy, good job. He got married. Congrats! Yeah, oh, I, he did. You didn't watch the wedding? I didn't get up early to watch the wedding. No. <laughs> did you want to watch it? No. No. Okay. No. Okay. All right. I just was wondering if I was the only one that didn't want to watch it. No, I'm sorry. I just <laughs> couldn't bear to do it. It's like okay. I just wonder if that, that would have any effect on gold prices come tomorrow. Yeah, you know, the royal wedding and all. Hmm. But I, I do want to let everyone know, obviously, I, I think we might have talked a little bit about it or at least shared the post um, that Shannon Poe from AMRA sent out oh, yes. about California where dredging, it looks dredging is coming back next year I see. in California. I see. So he's not able to call in today, okay. he said, because they have their outing still. Right. Uh, but he's going to do his best to call in this Wednesday awesome. so he can talk a lot more about it and what it means. And Great. Hopefully that will open up doors in other states and mm-hmm. lo- locations and whatnot. Mm-hmm. You know, because I know, obviously, there's been problems even in Alabama with our friend Lou. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, Oregon, 
Washington. Or a gun. Uh, I'll say how <laughs> I want to say it. But yeah, so it'll be interesting to hear and have him explain everything of what's going on. So it looks yeah. like it's really a great victory. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there's yeah. a lot to it. I think. I, I mean, if you read his, go to their website and read about it, it's. It's, a lot of moving parts to it, it what happened so yeah it seemed like it that's why it would be nice <laughs> for it to have shannon come on and just yeah. put it in layman's terms and clarify exactly. it to where we can understand it and it's like sweet but i'm with you it looks like it's, it's yeah it's coming it's, it's a big victory and yeah. so uh wednesday i he told me to remind him okay so okay <laughs> tune in wednesday tune in wednesday show and uh we'll have him call in and give us a in-depth update yes yeah on that so that is cool good news real good right. news definitely all right now do you want to have the dennis is on the line waiting do you want him to go ahead and sing and then he's got to go i do yeah dennis since dennis had the work tonight mm-hmm. thankfully he can call in and sing so take it away big dennis okay happy birthday to you happy birthday Day to you. Happy I wonder if he's singing in the bathroom. <laughs> Work. It kind of sounds you. like it. Yeah, there's a little echo. Happy mm-hmm. birthday <laughs> to you. Hey, at least no video this time, bro. Thank God. Right? Good job, Dennis. Great Thank job. you. Get back well, to work. He yep. already hung up. It sounded yeah, like did, so. Yeah. <laughs> May twentieth birthdays. Uh, the first <laughs> one we have is screen name: Big Boys Hobbies, Bill Jordan, Captain R J M, Don Davis, Doug B G G. Uh, this one's a tough one. Which one? Get your gummy. <laughs> Gold. Get your gummy gold. Get your gummy gold. Yeah, gami that's gold. cool. <laughs> I like that. One, one of those things, I had to say it in my head before I tried to think. <laughs> but we have Jim Haynes, Josh Wilson, Kurt Collins, and Tony Baker. And tomorrow, uh, Daryl Bumstead, David Black, James D. Johnson, Jim Johnson, and Nicholas C. All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, everybody. It is an honor getting... Dennis singing happy birthday to to him all each week. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> and it's funny because Wolfie said every time we play it, his dogs cry. And that's, <laughs> I kind of, <laughs> I can see that happen. <laughs> I like it, though. I enjoy Dennis's singing. Thank you, Dennis, for that. Shad, thank you for that, man. We appreciate it. Great job. And as always, we want to thank you for being here with us. So what we're going to do now... We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back with some Coolies Corner. So we'll be right back, everybody. Do you like to mine for gold, enjoy prospecting a nice crack in the bedrock, enjoy getting outdoors to camp, fish, hunt, and hike on your public lands? You plan your trip, load the gear, grab the dog, put the family in the truck, and drive off to a locked gate. A sign says you cannot enter or access your own public lands. Mining claims and public land owned by We the People are being designated as off-limits by our own government every single day. Are you concerned about the direction our government is going? Are you tired of seeing no access, no entry signs on your lands? We are, and we are fighting back. We are AMRA, America Mining Rights Association, the fastest growing small mining advocacy association in America. AMRA is a 501c3 not-for-profit formed by miners, hunters, off-roaders, retired military men, and women to stop the insanity. AMRA was formed to educate, unite, and help the small miners and public land users on their rights. Rights given to us by God. Do you want access to great mining claims? For a small tax-deductible donation to their Miners Legal Fund, your family gains access to proven excellent mining claims across America for an entire year. AMRA challenges the USFS, BLM, EPA, and the other agencies intent upon stopping you from enjoying your own lands. You are who pays these people's wages. It is time they listen to us. 
us. We need to unite. And that is what AMRA is doing. As you sit here right now, thousands of acres of public lands are being closed, locked, and blocked from use by you. Are you fed up yet? Join us. Get in on this fight and let's restore America to what our families fought and died for. Freedom. Just visit AmericanMiningRights.com. AmericanMiningRights.com. Also, check us out on Facebook at American Mining Rights Association. AmericanMiningRights.com. Just stop by on my way home to show you all my gold. You've been digging into some Jimbo's gold pay dirt. Yeah, Jimbo's gold made me a hero. Huh? Got an amazing idea and supplies on sale from Jimbo's website. With bad weather, bored kids, and stressed wife, I threw a panning party for the kids and their friends. All the moms got a break. Kids had a blast. Hero. Happy kids, happy wife, great gold. That's why Jimbo's gold is always my first choice. Did you teach panning or share your prospecting knowledge? Then you are our hero. Tell us your story for a chance to receive a hero's reward at www.jimbosgold.com slash hero. Welcome to Cooley's Corner. Join Rich Cooley as he talks about equipment, new products, and so much more for all us prospectors and treasure hunters. Here's Rich. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Cooley's Corner. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about pumps. Uh, basically, when I didn't have my dredge, now that I have a dredge, I always used a cheap Harbor Freight pump when I was using my high banker dredge combination, which was a two and a half inch uh, setup, basically. Mm-hmm. Now, the Harbor Freight pump, they actually changed it. It's like red now instead of blue, basically almost the same. It's a Predator engine, I believe, mm-hmm. from what I remember. And it was 156 gallons per minute, 9,654 so. gallons per hour is what it used to be. I'm pretty sure it's probably about the same thing. Uh, and they basically work up to about a three inch. Uh, basically, we're going to start off talking a little bit about different types of pumps, and then I'm going to bring Ken on, and uh, Ken's going to clarify some of the stuff. And if we have any questions, you can call in and talk to Ken and myself, and we'll see if we can answer your questions. Cool. Uh, basically, standard centrifugal pumps, uh, we'll talk a little bit about it, and it provides an economical choice for general purpose dewatering. A number of different sizes are available, but most common models are offering like 2 inch to 4 inch range with flows from 142 to 500 gallons per minute, and the heads in the range from 90 to 115 feet. Now, we talked about the head lifts before when uh, I was in a different thing, and that's the lift from the stream up. You know, until the pump. So that's that's your head lift. Okay. These pumps should only be used in clear water applications as they have limited solid handling capability of only like 10% by volume. The impellers uh, typically use three vein designs. And it's impact. Let's see. And the volute as impact, preventing the passage of large solids. Rule of thumb is the pump will only pass uh, solids like a quarter inch diameter of the suction inlet. One advantage of these pumps have uh, comparatively sized trash models in their low initial cost. There are several reasons for the difference. Low horsepower engines are utilized that are smaller in size or more fuel efficient. Uh, mechanical seals, since they are subjected to harsh working conditions, can be made less costly material. Additionally, the casings are smaller and have fewer machine parts tend to combine the smaller engines, make the pumps much lighter in weight. A little bit about the high-pressure centrifugal pumps. Uh, the high-pressure centrifugal pumps are designed for use in applications requiring high discharge pressures and low flows. Contractors may use them to wash down equipment on job sites as well as install them uh, on water trailers. Other uses include irrigation, Emergency standby pumps for fire applications. Of course, also dredging. <laughs> the impeller is cast iron two vein design. The large volute is required to handle the higher volume of water. Uh, the mechanical seal, like the impeller and volute, is selected for abrasion resistance. Hopefully, I don't lose you here. My power just 
blink. Uh-oh. So <laughs> the lights are flickering on and off in the house. That Uh-oh. ain't good. No, that's not good. <laughs> uh, Primus's pumps are designed for trash pumps. They're unique, high flow, and higher handling characteristics are well suited for large volume dewatering uh, projects. Wait a minute, that was trash pumps. I'm sorry, I got okay. screwed up. It's all right. When the lights started flickering. <laughs> After the firefighting applications, it's typically these pumps will discharge around 145 gallons per minute and produce heads in excess of 3,000 feet. Uh, the pump may have a two or three inch suction port and up to three discharge ports varying on the size of versatility. Uh, the impellers should use on these pumps are closed design and not open like those used on other types. Uh, these pumps, by design, are not capable of handling any types of solids or sandy water. Silt, sand, or debris would almost immediately clog the pump if allowed to enter in the casings. Uh, now we'll talk a little bit about the trash pumps. Uh, they get their name from ability to handle large amounts of debris and are preferred choice of contractors in the rental industry. Most common sizes are 2 to 6 inch range. And their flows are from 200 to 1,600 GPM gallons per minute and heads up to 150 feet. Man, that's a lot. The mm-hmm. rule of thumb is that a trash pump will generally handle solids up to a half inch in diameter of suction inlet. Solid sticks, stones, debris flow through without clogging, making them ideal for water conditions. Trash pumps often... Uh, Another benefit, if they can be quickly and easily disassembled for service for inspection, which basically we don't really use trash pumps too much in our business. Is Ken on here? Yeah. Yep. Hey, Don, Ken. Hey, everybody. Hi. How are you, Ken? Just fine. Hey, uh, basically you have, you can have what they call a trash pump a semi-trash pump, and a clear water pump. Mm-hmm. Where in our particular application, we're using the uh, clear water pump more so than anything. Semi-trash pumps will work basically to some degree in our, in our prospecting application. And, uh, but they're basically designed for somewhat like... Uh, moving uh, crude oil or chemicals Mm -hmm. uh, of a a heavy uh, nature, okay? And uh, they are very, they are less efficient in the prospecting industry. Where they don't, they don't put out, they're not as efficient as the clear water pump. If, uh, if you're going to, if anybody's thinking of uh, picking up harbor freight pumps or something from uh, rural Ranch King or something, mm-hmm. try to pick up a clear water pump rather than a semi trash or a trash pump. Well, you also would want a, like a high pressure pump too, though, right? Right. You want a high pressure clear water pump. Especially for dredges, yeah. Right. But most of your. Most of your pumps like that, even though they are a centrifugal type pump, mm-hmm. they're not they're not efficient much for anything much bigger than a three inch. Right. Because they don't uh, they don't put out enough enough pressure for one thing. They may have the volume of water, right. but it does it does take a uh, a bounce combination of both pressure and volume of water. For a dredge to operate right. efficient. So now, if we're dealing with something like, say, our dredges that we're running four and five inch, of course we want a high pressure pump. What is basically like the PSI that we're looking for, like seventy eight and, and above, or can you, you want, get away with something a little bit smaller? Uh, if you can find, I, I I've used both. Well, actually, three three different types of high pressure, high volume pumps. Mm-hmm. The uh, Keen PE uh, 180 pump puts out 310 gallon of water a minute 
with about 95 pounds PSI. Is that what it is? Okay. And uh, you can run up to a uh, a four inch dredge with that real efficient. I use a pair of six and a half horsepowers Briggs and Stratton engines with the P180 pumps mm -hmm. on on a five inch. I can run clear up to probably a six inch with the two pumps and the two motors that I have. I also use a nine horsepower Honda with a P, uh, I think it's a 350. Anyway, yeah, P, P350 keen pump there. I've tried the uh, Proline makes some awful good pumps there. There's a, a little, they're a little more adaptable because you can go from uh, just about anything you want and you can adapt those pumps to just about any engine you want. Right. Now, I know North Star, and uh, make, they make some half-decent ones, too. I think uh, uh, what Gold Getter used to have a North Star, or Northern Star, I think is what it was. And it was pretty good. It had like 74 or 80 PSIs, and it looked like it had pretty good pressure. I haven't uh, had too many dealings with the North Star. I haven't... Uh, it's something that, that came out here within the last couple, three years, so I haven't had a a, a chance or a, a, a need to even use right. one of them. I haven't seen one, let's put it that way. I know that there's a, a few people that's bought them, and they they read that they're the greatest thing on, the, on mm -hmm. the planet. I do know that some people say that they're not, but... Yeah. You know, I know I like the Honda. I, I have a Honda GPX 160 with a 5.5 horsepower. It has a P180 pump on it, and I actually uh, tested it this weekend, but bench tested it, and I put a, a big trash can underneath it and put the hoses in there and put a tie tie around it and fired it up, and it actually broke the tie tie, blew the hose out of it, it had water all over the place. It, it made a heck of a mess, but it was funny. I mean, that thing's got some pressure. <laughs> They they do, Rich, and you know actually, you can uh, you can go to just about any Honda dealer that mm -hmm. sells Honda products and that, especially small engine repair shops. Right. You you can uh, to adapt the keen pump over to them. It's a piece of cake because you can go into to your small engine repair shops, and they can order you a 5 8 mm -hmm. threaded shaft on a six and a half horsepower Honda or engine or whatever. And and that brings up the key point, you know, that I want to bring up. You know, if you want to put like a P180 pump on, try to put it on a Harbor Freight pump, it's not going to work without some adjustment. You have yeah. to get an adapter unless you change the shaft because it will not work. It's a different yeah. setup. Right. But I, I can tell you this much. Uh, if, you, if you're just going to go to, uh, say, something like a uh, like a three-inch dredge and you don't want to spend the big bucks for an, an all-out, real, way-out pump, uh -huh. I, I would actually go... Go to Harbor Bay, get a six and a half horsepower motor, and I would actually get a pacer pump and and just bolt it on. It's a, it's actually almost a bolt on item, and you got uh, you can have roughly by fitting it on a six and a half horsepower, the pacer pump you're probably going to be pushing maybe 65 psi's, and you're going to be pushing probably 200 and maybe 260 gallon of water a minute. Yeah, I know Darth, Darth made an adapter for his. Right. Uh, he used a Proline pump, and then he made an adapter to make his 6.5 Predator work. So, right. can be fun. Yeah. You can, you know, I I like the uh, the Proline pump, but the only, the only, the only kickback with the Proline is that pump yeah, you, you have to be able if you're doing it yourself, mm -hmm. and, and you can make the adapter to do it. You're fine, but if you have to pay to have somebody do it, you're going to pay out 
an arm and a leg for it. Well, hopefully at the end of this year or next year, I'll be uh, probably hitting everybody up and you up to, because I'm probably going to put an air compressor on mine. So I'm going to have to pull my pump off, put the pulley on and all that. So I'll be asking instructions for that. I know there was some videos vaguely on that, but, you know, I did watch a couple videos on YouTube, but they wasn't very helpful on some of the information. I mean... Actually, I, I don't know whether Ken still has them, but uh, to actually adapt your your pump over for the air compressor and putting the pulley on there, they make a sleeve that fits on the shaft, mm -hmm. and the pulley fits on over the over the sleeve, and when you snug your impeller down again the end of that sleeve, it tightens it right up against. The, uh, right, and know. that's what I noticed also. I noticed in some of the videos when they installed the pulleys on, they didn't tighten the Allen screws. Because when because they took the, the pump the, off, the, it would slide right off. Yeah, yeah. you know, the, the thing of the deal is, though, you should tighten that set screw, that Allen set screw up again to sleeve. Because that way, you can still slide it on and off. And that way, if you ever have to take it up, you don't have to go back and readjust that pulley go on that sleeve mm -hmm. to line it up with the yeah, pulley on the compressor. Once you tighten that set screw down against that sleeve, it's, it stays there. You don't have to change that. But and what I didn't uh, see before, Ken, on that is that Allen screw on that pulley doesn't go all the way through to tighten up on the shaft. The Allen screw only tightens on the sleeve itself of the of the Right. Pulley. Right, it's, yeah. that's right. It's only supposed to tighten up on that sleeve, so that you don't have to keep keep adjusting it every it. time you pull it off. And what tightens that sleeve up is when you snug that sleeve, the impeller down uh -huh. a, again. That sleeve it forces that sleeve back against the bearing race, the uh, the inner bearing race on the outside of the motor. It snugs it right up against that, mm -hmm. and that and that bearing, the, that race rolls on the bearings right. with, with the uh, the impeller and shaft. And, so, and you would have thought that that would actually slip, but it doesn't. So it, it doesn't. I've never had one slip. Yeah, because I, uh, I always thought you had to tighten the Allen screw up. When I watched the videos, I seen him pull the pump off and pull the pulley right off, and I'm like, wait a minute, they didn't back off any Allen screw, and I questioned it, you know. Yeah, you no, know, I am. a lot of people do question it. I mean, that's people that haven't never taken them apart. And that's they, why I sent you the pictures that time, because I was a little confused when I went to tighten the Allen screw up. It didn't come all the way through on the inside of the, you know, right, where the right. motor shaft would be. And I right. questioned it, like, why? And it's only drawing it up on the sleeve, so. But uh, the pulley on the... The pulley that goes on the motor proper for the uh, T80 compressor mm -hmm. or the uh, t gas 263 compressor is a two inch diameter pulley outside. It has, I think it's a, uh, I think it, it, I think it's a three quarter inch hole bore on uh, for the sleeve. Okay, mm -hmm. and th and this is like a a five five and a half six and a half horsepower engine okay all right on the hondas yeah uh, and it's same as the uh as the uh briggs intake okay well if we so, get any phone calls you can open up the line a while there yep tim okay they're open now i know somebody asked about what about the dowkey pump ken the dowkey mm -hmm. i uh i haven't had much experience with them okay mm -hmm. i know that uh guy by the name of uh, Dan Murphy. He actually started out on one of the, on the Bering Sea Gold Series here mm -hmm. when they first started years ago. And he uses the Dowkey pumps. And uh, he swears up and down by them. But he's still, he's running, he's running big, big motors and big pumps. I haven't seen uh, or had any access to uh, any of the smaller Dalkey pumps, okay? Right. So I can't. 
but they 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 seem to be pretty efficient from what I've heard. Uh, now Alan Tree at Gold Dredge Builders used to be Gold Dredge Builders. He sold it out, mm -hmm. but he used what they call a gold grabber pump, and that gold grabber pump is very very compatible to the Proline pump. Mm -hmm. You can. It's very compatible to it, hmm. and and the only disadvantage I can that I've seen with both that one and the Proline pump is they don't have a port with a threaded fitting coming out that you can screw a blaster hose on. Yeah. Okay. And actually, if you if you really get down and hard pack down in the down in the in the river or creek say six eight ten foot even 30 foot that blaster nozzle is a must especially in hard packed material mm -hmm. it, it it can it can take and make a make less work out of a out of a bad day for you <laughs> well said <laughs> but but you know it's uh my my personal opinion is i've uh I've used pretty much all of them. There used to be one that was out years ago called uh, Gold Dredge Pump. Mm -hmm. and, and it was put out by an outfit out of uh, Oregon. And uh, they were relatively small. I think they had an inch and a quarter intake and a one inch outlet. And they were, they were coupled direct mount to a uh, two-cycle engine, mm -hmm. and I mean, for for small cleanup units and that, and small and high bankers say, ten wide, uh, forty-eight inch long, high banker setup, mm -hmm. you couldn't you couldn't beat them. Oh really? And then, and then there was another one up that uh, came out there and it was an AP twenty-five, or AP one twenty-five. And it was put on a home light built that one, mm -hmm. but it it was like a it had a, re, a small reservoir, but it was two cycle, and and those little pumps put out mega mega pre pressure and gal and volume, mm -hmm. but they but they were never they were small, and I believe that you could have actually run like maybe. Uh, a two-inch dredge, say that something that was maybe ten inches wide, maybe thirty-six inches long. You may you may have run run the uh, the power jet set up there or, or a suction nozzle that way with them. And it's just, it's the difference, and the, and the the uh, the venting and the veining inside of those pumps there, the angle of the pitch, and uh, that which gave them their their uh, multi features there to where you could uh, pump a lot of water with a with a with a fair amount of psi's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Now, if anybody's got any questions, they'll call the number is four one nine five two zero seven five seven four. Rich and Ken will answer your pump questions to the best of their abilities. I guarantee they will. <laughs> now. I don't know if you answered this one earlier or not, Ken, but if somebody's just starting out and got them a small high banker or something, is it, they shouldn't spend the money on, like, a clear water pump, should they? Shouldn't they just get, like, a trash pump or something? That'll work fine, right? Uh, uh, Tim, basically, you go to Harbor Place mm -hmm. or, or some of these other places. They carry both a trash pump and a clear water pump. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically... The prices don't vary that much on them. Oh, okay. I thought they did. Yeah. <clears throat> no, they, you know, I've actually, I get a catalog from Herbert Freight mm -hmm. about every month. And I actually check their prices up, and their prices are pretty compatible with anything. Oh, okay. But, like, if, you, if you're going to start out, I, I, I'm real partial to... The uh, the Briggs in, the Briggs Intech engine, mm -hmm. 
and the pacer pump. Right. I, uh, I I just always had more more faith in the pacer pump than I had the Herbert Freight pump. Right. And it's like uh, Bob Drake there. When he started building his high banker, he asked me about pumps. And I recommended a Briggs & Stratton engine with the pacer pump. He found, he got lucky. He got the Briggs engine and the pacer pump. It develops 52 PSIs, and I think it's pumping, pushing something like 230, 250 gallon of water a minute, mm -hmm. which, which is basically... That's not, and it's only like I think five a horsepower, five and a half horsepower, wow. and that's not that's not a, much of an overkill mm -hmm. for for a high banker. Plus, if you ever decided to go, if you ever decided to go to something bigger for a high banker, you could probably you can run up to a a, a two and a half inch dredge with that same motor and pump mm -hmm. with, with no problem. And it don't make any difference whether you're running, running your, ho your pressure hose to uh, a power jet or to a suction, regular suction nozzle. That particular motor and pump will handle it all. Now, and the best thing of it is, if you're using a high banker, you need to make sure you put a valve on so you can control your water. Oh, okay. R now, right. <clears throat> now, is there a way you can test your pump to see how much pressure and how much lift and all that you're getting from it is you, you can you can actually check the rpms mm -hmm. you can put a you can put a pressure gauge in the hose someplace okay and you would actually have to put like a a t fitting in there someplace and then you'd have to you'd have to hold plug you one end of the hose there and put a pressure regular gauge on it, okay, and, and see what what kind of pressure you had there. Okay, interesting. And you could do it that way. Mm -hmm. I've never, you know, I've never really done it, but right, I, I do know how you can do it. Okay, I just was wondering and, if there was a way, because like if somebody wanted to test and see if <clears throat> their pumps wearing out or something like that, if there was a way to check it. That's all. That was well, curious. Right. Usually, usually the pump don't wear out. If you wear anything out, you're gonna you're gonna wear the rings out in the motor, mm. and you and you're gonna lose your compression that way. Now, is there any kind of certain maintenance people should do to their actual pump each year to prevent from wearing <coughs> the impeller or anything like that? Uh, I actually have some tips written down here, Ken. Oh, good. <laughs> Uh, basically, pump storage tips. Okay. Drain the pump cases uh, completely out of water to prevent, to prevent damage from freezing. Uh, if complete draining is not possible, pour a small amount of antifreeze in the casing and rotate the pump shaft, which I, I don't really enter. You know, I really don't think you should put antifreeze in it. But <laughs> uh, Seal suction and discharge ports to prevent the entry from debris. If the pump has oil lubricant seal, drain the oil from the seal cavity and refill with 30-weight non-detergent motor oil. For water-cooled seals, place one half pint of lubricating oil through the discharge opening in the pump. Turn the engine over a couple times. This will prevent uh, corrosion and keep it sealed. So that's just some of them. You have anything else, Ken? I would. I wouldn't put antifreeze in it. Yeah. Most most pumps. Most pumps, if you if you tip them, if you tip them up, you're going to uh, you're going to drain them all out. Yeah. Most of your most of your Harbor Freight pumps, your Pacer pump, they all have a drain that a drain plug in them. Yeah, right on the bottom. I was bottom. reading that antifreeze one and I didn't want to read it, but it was already out of my mouth by the time. <laughs> That's basically if you're storing something, you know. But yes, non gold related, you know. Gotcha. But I, I usually, I don't have too much of a problem with with mm -hmm. with a motor and a pump there, and I'm running the I've run the same motors and pumps for <coughs> for years. 
I know you definitely want to get the water out of them because they can crack the housing and it can, uh, in the Harbor Freights, I heard people that wouldn't drain it and what it did was it rusted the impeller and locked it up, basically. Yeah, it, it will do it, you know. Corroded you, it, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know. You can, uh, if you want to take the pump apart and, and do this, you can get in there, take the outer housing off that pump to where you can get into the impeller. You might take a little bit of, uh, I don't recommend that you use, uh, oh, what's a WD-40 or mm -hmm. anything like that. They make a silicone spray. Right. And, and, it's, uh, and you can actually shoot silicone spray back in again your seal and so on and so forth, okay? Right. And it doesn't rust, it doesn't deteriorate. And it, it works almost very similar to STP without being an oil-based setup. So there's no, there's no contamination of water when going into any piece of equipment when you start it, okay? Mm -hmm. For the next year. I got a question for you then, Ken. Yeah, but, uh, it's it's not it's not that expensive to do it, but I usually I usually when I get through dredging or running for the year, first thing I usually do is come home, and I have a little table, and I take each one of six motors if I run all six of them through the summer. The first thing I do is I drop the oil out of them. And I let it sit there and drip until all that oil comes out. Mm -hmm. And then I put all brand new oil back in it. The gas, I completely drain the gas out of the carburetor, out of the tank. I run the gas, and then I run the gas in my four-wheeler when I start pushing snow. That way I don't have a lot of excessive old gas hanging, mm -hmm. sticking around. And plugs... Every year I got a brand new plug for it to go in. Hmm. And I usually put them in at the end of my dredge season. That way, all I have to do is put oil in it, gas in it, fire it up, and I'm ready to go for the next year when I get ready to go. I don't, I don't have to kill a lot of time doing it. And it don't take, it don't take only but a couple of hours to put the oil in, in all of the motors, and I'm ready to go for the next year. For the all next right, season. Well, he has a question for you. Okay. He was wondering if a 12-volt, 2,000 GPH pump will work if the tip is necked down to create more pressure to power an inch-and-a-half suction nozzle into a sluice. There's no real lift or anything just to suck up and move the stuff. And I asked him, actually, what's the inlet and outlet size? Because that's important to know when you're dealing with the 12-volt, 2,000 GPH. I mean, Basically, Rich, you need a little more information. What yeah. is his PSI rating right now? Yeah. Basically, on 12-volt on pumps, where you, where you haven't got much of a – if you've got a one-inch opening there, and you've only got like maybe uh, 30 psi. It won't. I don't think it'll run a dredge, mm -hmm. personally. And if it does run it, it's going to be pulling a lot of a lot of a lot of wattage mm -hmm. off of that 12 volt battery there. And unless you got some tremendously big, heavy, awkward 12 volt RV batteries, mm -hmm. I doubt if you get. I doubt if you get over. Four hours runtime with it, trying right. to pump that water that continuous. And it says it's garden hose size three quarter, I believe. I don't think that'll work actually. Uh, I don't know three quarter size. That it's, it's it's not so much how many gallons of water a minute is pumping. It still requires a bounce combination of pressure, right, and volume of water. Mm -hmm. And if, if he's pumping 2,000 gallon an hour, he can figure this out uh, 
merely by taking 60 into 2,000 and he can figure out how many gallons of water a minute that pump is going to put out. And if he say, at that particular point, say he's uh, pumping, uh, he's probably going to be pumping about maybe uh, probably 130 or something, I don't know. Yeah, about 130 gallons of water a minute. Probably 30 gallons of water. He might, if he's lucky, he might be able to run an inch and a half nozzle going into a, a dredge or something like that. I think if he went to, he might be able to push two inches if, if he gets lucky and, he's, and he's, he doesn't have any, uh, he's not pushing a lot of material through, big heavy material through it. Interesting. You know. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that answered Whoopi's question. I I I don't. Uh, I've got twelve volt pumps there, and I use them uh, on different pieces of equipment. Mm -hmm. But I have a, and I don't use it very often. Remember, I said I they were the one that came out called Gold Dredge. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was hooked to a, a two cycle engine. I have one of them. And if I want to use something to move some material at home and that, that's what I go with. That whole pump and motor don't weigh 20 pounds hmm. full of gas. Mm -hmm. And you, and all you got to really worry about is a plug every now and then. You don't have to. And mixing the oil with the gas. Right. And, and you know, it, it, it's, it's a maintenance fee type little setup. If you really want to go that way, I uh, I think if I was going to try to go to something on a small dredge like that, and I'm not I'm not going to knock it, but Harbor Freight has a little bitty, I believe it's a a three horsepower. They have a one inch, and that pulls two thousand two hundred and twenty. Right, and. If I was going to run something, I, I would, you know, they're only, they're less, at one time they were about $89, yeah. plus if you had the, uh, if you got the, the discount coupon off the internet, it put it down at $79. That's about a buck a cc, because those engines are only 79 ccs, mm -hmm. so, so that was only about a buck a cc. Mm -hmm. But I think they're a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. No, okay. <laughs> so, but if I if I was thinking of going that route, because you can always take that little that little motor and pump right there, will probably run everything up to a two inch dredge or suction nozzle or the power jet on a dredge with no problem. Interesting. And for seventy nine bucks, can't seventy nine, eighty nine, whatever it is now. And that's for small operations, yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, and but still, all in all, if you're gonna run something like that and use something like that on a high banker and say you're going to like a a six or eight inch wide uh sluice box by thirty six or forty inches long, mm -hmm. that's more than that's more than enough water. To run that, you okay. know. For high bank, for, yeah. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. But you can still, depending on how your spray bars are, you can still put a valve in there so that you can have a little more control over your water flow going through that. Right. <clears throat> and my, my advice to people, <laughs> and for what it's worth, if you don't, don't worry about an overkill on motors and pumps. Because you can all, especially on high bankers, because you can always put a valve on it, and you can always make it adjustable to your likings and to what your prop, what your needs are. Mm -hmm. 
and, you know. and with that pump you was talking about, you're not carrying a battery around in with you either. So right, that makes life right. a lot easier, don't it? Mm-hmm. It, yeah. yeah, you know, especially if, you know, twelve volt batteries. I've I've used motorcycle batteries. I've used uh, lawnmower batteries. I've used RV batteries. I'll tell you what, I ain't gonna tote no 75, <laughs> 80 pound, 12 volt RV battery around for the day. If I all I got to do is carry that motor down, and set it down uh, with a can of gas, mm -hmm. guaranteed. Right. Some of the areas you're only allowed battery operated equipment too, uh, so I understand what they mean. Oh, yeah. Okay. That I I nice. I understand that too, Rich. Mm -hmm. But but you can take. If you're gonna if you're gonna go with a battery there and you and you're really leery about that battery not having enough juice uh, left in it after a period of time, get your small. I think you can get an 18 watt uh, solar panel. Oh, there it's a good idea. Yeah, you know, and hook that up to mm -hmm. it. You know, so, but you know, there, there's ways to. Uh, Compromise and for, for anything and everything with this. Yeah, but you have to be able to, right? You have to be able to think outside the box, right? That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Way outside that yeah. box. <laughs> Get out of the box, but, close the lid, and then think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Agreed. You know, I, I I've done this a lot of different things over a lot of years, and. I, I'm I'm too old. I I was too old thirty years ago to carry twelve volt battery around. <laughs> yeah, that would that would add to that make it rough. Yeah, I feel bad for these guys that can only use the battery operated stuff. What's the biggest battery operated pump you can get? You know, that'll run on uh, a twelve volt. Any ideas? I think you can get a, a three thousand gallon. 12 volt pump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think Dart has a 3,000, I think. 3,000. Uh, uh, hmm. But the the bad, the big thing with that, it pulls a lot of amperage. Oh, sure. That's like out of that battery. Mm-hmm. Yep. I would yeah. think it would. It's like, it's like you take a, an 18 volt battery powered electric drill. Mm-hmm. You use it maybe for an hour, and it's time to change batteries again, especially if you're using it constantly. They they don't uh, they don't hold hold the charge that long. Mm -hmm. We used uh, we used a battery powered set up there on a uh, shop back, backing in cracks and crevices out of some bedrock one time. Mm-hmm. It lasted 30 minutes. Wow. And, yeah, you know. You went a lot longer than that. That's for sure. Right? <laughs> you, want, mm -hmm. you want something that's going to run at least four to six hours in a battery-packed unit. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I can feel for these people. I do, too, yeah. That, 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 that have to use, can't use motorized equipment. Mm -hmm. Because... They, they're actually, you know, I won't say they're not going to recover gold, but they're not going to recover as much as if they were using full other type of uh, of equipment, such as gas-powered equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Right. So that's a shame, though, that they can't use gas-powered. There's also solar panels and stuff you can use too for charging. Mm -hmm. Also, you know. right. Uh, I have a. I think it's an 18 watt solar panel, and I use it a lot. Just I just have it set up on my motorhome, on the main battery in my motorhome, mm -hmm. and because we're constantly we're constantly playing the uh, the radio in that thing, we kind of constantly plugging phones into it and whatever else. And so on and so forth. We have a, I have a little 12 volt uh, 
many TV sets there. It's a black and white, but mm. I still get I can still pick up a lot of the channels at times, if, depending on where I'm at. Right. And but it pulls a lot of juice out of that particular. And the only place I have that I can plug it into is through a cigarette lighter. Mm. So, so you know, because it has to go back through through a a, a, a converter. To get what I to get to get reduce the voltage down. Right. So you know, but even by reducing the voltage down, it uses a lot of amperage. But you know. It makes it tough. That's for sure. Definitely makes but, it tough. But you take you take your trash pumps. You know the each pump is rated. Every pump is rated for a specific purpose. Mm-hmm. Like like your clear water pumps rated for a specific purpose. Semi trash pumps are rated for a specific purpose. Mm-hmm. Trash pumps are rated for a specific person purpose. And we're not going to discuss solid waste pumps. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. The Harbor Freight ones are semi trash. Right. So. That's what I have for my high banker is a Harbor yeah. Freight semi trash one. Mm-hmm. And and and. It, it, they work. Your semi-trash pumps will work fairly well with pumping water, but you don't. I don't think you really get a hundred percent efficiency compared to the clear water. Right, because the semi-trash pumps are only forty-two to forty-five psi. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Got right. It. Interesting. Good stuff. Good to know. That's for sure. <laughs> right. Well, I guess if there's nothing else, thanks for your help, Ken. Yeah, Appreciate that's... it. Yeah. Maybe about any time, Rich. Great job, Ken. Thank you for stopping Good by. Job. <laughs> we, we got anybody with more questions out there? I don't see no more. I haven't seen any. I looked in the chat. They'll wait, and then the minute you we we disconnect you, somebody will call in with one. So. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. You guys are talking a, a different language yeah. with all the t- technical you stuff. You guys, <laughs> you guys have a good night and enjoy the rest of the show, okay? You too. Thanks, Ken, right. for helping. Bye, Bye Ken. Bye, bud. Very cool. Great segment tonight. That's a lot of lot, a lot of a lot of info. I mean, good lord. Some, yeah. it, sometimes it's it gets uh, confusing to me too. It's like, gosh darn. I don't, yeah. I don't know how you guys figure it all out. I don't know how you guys, uh. <laughs> <laughs> right? I guess I don't have a mechanical brain. <laughs> well, I do, but I don't want to think like that. I just want to go. Okay, is this going to pump yeah, enough water? Sometimes it's just you know easier just to do the extra stuff and be done with it mm-hmm. instead of making stuff so hard. You know what I mean? Right. I I just go. Okay, will this pump enough water? I see if somebody yeah. else has one like that, and then I go, okay, it'll work for what I need it to the basic do. Basic thing with high bankers is, as long as you have that valve on, pretty much mm-hmm. any of that motors will will work. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're just dealing with water flow, you're not dealing with pressure yeah, until you right. actually need a dredge. You know, right? When you're actually doing a dredge, is when you need the pressure for your jet and your flare and all that. You know, true. And you well, have pressure I, for that. I tell you one thing: when we first built our original two and a half inch dredge mm-hmm. of odd and end parts, you know, at, at the time because I didn't have a high pressure pump, we did use a trash pump, semi trash pump. Right, right. And yeah, it worked only because one, we weren't going deep. Mm-hmm. You know, we're like a foot, maybe two feet deep tops, if that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So not a lot of lift it was needed, but even still, there wasn't enough pressure in it because constantly you get little clogs right. just from material bunching up. Hmm. And it's like once you get a high pressure pump for dredging, oh my god, it's a world of difference. So yeah, I, yeah. Then you got suction; it'll suck your hand up against it. And, exactly. And, and it's like one of the thing I was thinking of if we ended up keeping that before I got the three inch keen dredge. Um, was just buying a pump, a high pressure pump to mount on, because mm-hmm. it was a Honda engine. So, um, but I didn't have to in the end. Yeah, I love my Honda pump. I oh, mean, yeah. it, it's awesome. And yeah. the carburetors are cheap too. You know, that's, I got them on eBay for twelve bucks. That's so, amazing I mean, that they're that cheap. I mean, it's 
really amazing. I know I I'm the same way. That Honda pump is just awesome. You just it just is very dependable. <laughs> you know, it's gonna starts start, right up. Starts right up and runs all day and don't give you no problems other than stupid carburetor thing, like Rich said. But I don't understand that. <clears throat> but now my my other pump, the one for my high banker, I haven't used it now in like two years. I wonder if that thing will even start. It's like good yeah. God, I need to take that out this I, year. I actually need to service mine too because mm-hmm. I, I hadn't fired it up since last year. That ever since I got my dredge, right? You get your dredge and you <laughs> neglect your high banker pump. And stuff. Yeah, I have two pumps. I actually have the one inch harbor freight and I have the two inch. Mm-hmm. I know the one inch I'm gonna need a carburetor on that one, but mm-hmm. I need to get it running because. Yeah, you definitely gonna. It's. I got two other ones in the garage that I picked up. That's a motor and pumps. I, they're brand new, but they set with gas in them for years. Mm. Gas turned to varnish in them when you know gas used to do that. <laughs> uh-huh. And now, that's why they're, they're. I bet they ain't got two hours on them. Wow. Uh, they they used them to pump out water one time and they put them in storage and never used them again. Mm. And I got two of them and I just need to probably like you said I'm probably gonna have to change the carburetors on them. Yeah, most likely. And they'll fire right up and they'd be great pumps, I bet. But I need to do that. I've had them for I've had them for a couple of years and haven't done nothing with them. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I just need to get rid of them. Maybe somebody could do that and get them running and use them. I don't know. Yeah, also want to bring up before we forget uh, the events and everything, especially don't forget about the Fosse coming up there in June, mm-hmm. June 9th and 10th. Mm-hmm. Be at the Swank Claim. Right so the uh, I know they got some stuff going on there with metal detecting and all kinds of stuff going on. So, mm-hmm. Oh, yes. That's going to be awesome. I Nighttime think- metal detecting. Uh, Dano's going to be doing a hog and all kinds of stuff going on they got planned so yeah i think make it to that make it to it i think Susie just posted it on the main page actually yeah that's why she? i caught oh her. good job rich Be on your yeah toes. it's on the uh she posted on the event section too so that way you can get all the cool details there it's very good thank you Susie, for doing that yeah if it's not in the events we can't announce it so that helps but yeah then, definitely if there's anything else you know, please post it in the in the coming weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, go down to the left and into the event section and add your event, and we'll make sure we announce it on our Wednesday night show. That's right. Shad's been announcing events every Wednesday, so get them in there, yeah. and Shad will announce it here on on the show. So make sure that's how we can spread the word about these events is if they're posted in the event section. A well, great job tonight, Rich. Enjoyed that. Yeah, good segment. Cool, he's going. No problem. And thanks, Ken, for great. helping. Right. Out. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was. Thanks, you, Ken, for calling in. Heck yeah! Now let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back, everybody. In 1858, gold was discovered in the rivers of New Caledonia. This discovery would spark a massive gold rush. Today, the search for gold is much easier, yet still challenging with dirt hog pay dirt. At Dirt Hog, we pride ourselves on our gold and guaranteed gold amounts. Just visit DirtHogPayDirt.com today and buy yourself a bag of the best pay dirt concentrates on the market. Order with confidence in Canada and North America. DirtHogPayDirt.com, the best gold concentrates on the market, period. Also, be sure to check out our Honest Bonus program. If you're interested in gold prospecting or treasure hunting as a career, hobby, passion, or just something you're interested in getting into, you have to visit goldprospectorspace.com. At goldprospectorspace.com, you'll find forums, chats, videos, blogs, sections on dry washing, metal detecting, high banking, and so much more. At goldprospectorspace.com. There's a store, classifieds, and at goldprospectorspace.com every Sunday night at 7.30 Eastern Time, tune in to Prospectors Radio, the talk show for gold prospectors and treasure hunters. Goldprospectorspace.com is a social network with thousands of members, and everything you need is at goldprospectorspace.com. Sign up today and get connected to others who share your love of gold and gold prospecting. Let the treasure hunt begin at goldprospectorspace.com. Goldprospectorspace.com. You're 
listening to Prospectors Radio, bringing you two hours of information and commentary on the fascinating world of gold prospecting and treasure hunting. everybody we're back stop dancing here for a minute <laughs> <laughs> and i am good to go again and so here's what else we got going on don't forget <clears throat> check out the gps monthly giveaway going on right now being sponsored by our friends at spike strike they're giving away a gold ram very easy to enter just follow the directions and enter be eligible for that giveaway and we also got the cronies giveaway going on right now for all our crony club members. So you don't have to do nothing to be entered if you're a crony. Just be a crony and you're eligible to win that. Then don't forget about our crony club quarterly nugget giveaway being sponsored by our good friends at Dirt Hog. And we also have our Patreon quarterly nugget giveaway being sponsored by Tommy Knocker Pay Dirt. So very cool. Check all those things out. Follow us over on our facebook page at the official gold prospector space and prospector radio page is that right shan did i say that right you said it right <laughs> that's a mouthful good job Tim. <laughs> thank you brother so proud. <laughs> and i think what uh, kathleen's gonna do she's gonna pick a name and we're gonna give away a pan and violent snuffer from our good friends over at make your own gold bars.com so be sure and check them out as well there's a link right there at the bottom of gps or show sponsors so you can Click on any of those show sponsors and some great stuff there they have to offer. So, Kathleen, you let me know when you're ready. I'm going to dig up the old song for our giveaway music. What do you guys want tonight? <laughs> Benny Hill or Jeopardy? <laughs> Benny Hill. Benny Hill, Rich Benny says. Hill. It's, it's unanimous. It's Benny Hill. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're going to oh, do. We have to do, when we all get together this weekend, we have to do yes. that uh, video. Yes, yeah. yes, definitely. We have to make that happen. Okay. Running around chasing Dennis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is, it is happening. I'm writing it down, Kathleen. Video right. <laughs> in big, bold letters. So we don't forget. Now, the rules are, as always, if Kathleen calls your name, you have one minute and 30 seconds to answer in the Gold Prospector Space chat room that you're here it's that simple easy peasy lemon squeezy so kathleen whenever you're ready let her rip tater chip <laughs> got a name <laughs> go for it it's john revis john revis one minute 30 john seconds see this <laughs> music makes me laugh Ravis, Ravis. Ravis. How's it spelled? Are you... I put it in the chat. Oh, okay. Ravis. Ravis. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm just picturing that video <laughs> with Dennis. Yeah, that'll be funny. <laughs> it will be hilarious. Oh, he's in this chat room. John, are you out there? Getting close. Hey, come on, John. I have to get another name. Get ready, Kathleen. Start digging. Okay. Got a couple seconds left. Fifteen. Ten. Five. Five. Time is up. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. Too bad. All right. I got a, I, another name. You have a backup name i do all right so you guys want jeopardy this time yeah we could change it up i think we should change it up i think so that way we don't burn them out on our benny hill that we like (laughs) (laughs) 
Okay. Let me wait. One All second. right. Okay. Let's try this again. Uh, this is Ted. Just Ted. Just Ted. <laughs> just Ted. That's how his name is in the chat room? No, it's just... No. Well, <laughs> no where, is he, where is he from? Uh, Massachusetts? Or is his name just Ted? No, it's Ted. Just T E D. Ted. And he's from Saugus, Massachusetts. Okay. Right? All right. So, so Ted from Saugus, Massachusetts. Here we go. Here he is. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, wait. Is it? Oh, he yeah, already did it. Look at that. Well, it that took was forever to figure quick. out stuff. There he is. That was like two seconds when we finally hit the music. Just Ted. Ted, I would add uh, something to your name. Ted. From just Massachusetts, Ted. or put just Ted. It don't matter, but something other than just Ted, because there's a lot of Ted's on here. So, <laughs> phew, that was difficult. <laughs> Ted Rich is going to side chat you and get all your mailing information, and we'll forward that on to Steve over at MakeYourOwnGoldBars.com, and he will get that out in the mail to you ASAP. So enjoy and. Big thanks to MakeYourOwnGoldBars.com for that great giveaway. We appreciate it. It's very cool. Man. So, let me see. Where? What else do we got, Shed? I know there was something else. Why am I drawing a blank again, as always? <laughs> Even though I have notes. I went through my notes pretty pretty well. Uh, what else, Shed? Help me. <laughs> you don't have nothing either, do you? <laughs> how, how, did you, how can you tell? The silence? Ignoring you? Yeah. It's like this awkward silence. Hmm. Well, no. I mean, we got all the giveaways. Quarterly Nugget giveaway right. for cronies and mm-hmm. patrons mm-hmm. coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, so yep. make sure you're members if you are. Um, check the Cronies Club tab. Go to that. Um, and it'll tell you if you're still a member or if it's expired. So make sure you get on that just because of the giveaways. We have extra giveaways for being a cronies. Mm-hmm. Uh, aside from our normal GPS uh, giveaway, which you can click the giveaway tab for those and make sure you enter. Um, other than that, other than I don't Shannon, know. I think we... Tune in Wednesday, though. I mean, Shannon, may call Shannon, Shannon oh, from yeah. AMRO will call and update us on the California yes. uh, dredging for 2019. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to hearing from him on that. That's for sure. Oh, definitely. And as well as, of course, the lovely Kathleen's dredging up the news. That's right. <laughs> and I just had it and I forgot already. Dang it. It was... <laughs> oh, what did I forget? Dang it. She had a hat. I can't even think now. Oh. I forgot. Oh, we're, we're like real close to announcing where the Crony Club outing's going to be. Oh, yes. like we really may, close or really, like really, close? really, really close. We may know Wednesday. Ooh, sweet. So we are that this close. This Wednesday, huh? Yeah, yeah. Ooh. We're that close. So it, That sounds exciting. Yes, yes. Now, can we give a hint in what geographical location this yes, may be? In the... Yes, you can if you'd like. If well, you got a good hint. In the south. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> Perfect. They just got a lot of rain, too. <laughs> yeah. Let's just say it was uh, in the area around the first gold rush in the United States. Okay. That's a good hint. There you go. There you go. So we hopefully, like I said, we'll have something Wednesday. Either yay or we'll continue on <laughs> with our search. So we are we are that close. That's all I can say. And Shad's cool. Well, hopefully some cronies um, that live around that area, we get to prospect with new people. and I think so. Yeah. Take this on the road. That's right. <laughs> oh, so That's what we need is a cronies club bus. That we do. I... <laughs> that we drive, you know, drive around and just prospect in mm-hmm. different locations. Yeah. Like a, like to a... meet all the cronies. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> just you go start out here and just head. Head south or something, stop in the Carolinas and Georgia and Virginia and all them places and just head on up and prospect in each one of them states with some of our cronies. That would be the coolest, wouldn't it? That's what we want to do. That would be great, right, Kathleen? Yeah. That's, yeah, we could head up to Arizona, California, 
Oh, yeah, we'd be like the Partridge family of prospects. <laughs> <laughs> we could pick up cronies as we go along. Yeah. <laughs> we could sing songs and paint our bus fancy colors. And <laughs> All right, now you're so creepy there. I'm sorry. Now it's starting to sound like a cult. Yeah, a real song thing and painting the cool little colors. Partridge yeah. family. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of like it. Uh, crony bus. Yeah, the crony cool bus, like Bruce said. Yeah, it would work. I like it. We need to look on Craigslist and find us a cool bus. Very cool. <laughs> well, we want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Dennis, we missed you, brother. I think Dennis will be here Wednesday. Rich, great segment. You and Ken did. We appreciate it. Muppet road trip. That's more like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Kathleen, Shad. Thank you, too, as always, Kathleen. Looking forward to the news Wednesday night. And I think that's it, as far as I know. You guys got anything else? Nope. No. Good. Everybody be safe. There's no show Sunday night, but right. we have a show Wednesday. Right. Thank you, Rich. Perfect. So we'll talk to everybody Wednesday night. Have a great week, y'all. We're out of here. See ya. Good night. Nighty night. We want to thank you for tuning in tonight, and be sure to join us every Wednesday night right here on Prospectors Radio for our West Coast Wednesday show at 9 Eastern Standard Time. Thanks again for listening.